So just a little bit ago, we had confirmation that ReZero is airing in Fall 2024, and also we got this really good preview that I'm going to go over. I'm going to be going through this uh, as a light novel reader, so if you're an anime only and you want no spoilers whatsoever, I would recommend dipping out now. If you don't mind some, then go ahead and stick around. Um, obviously, we can't say much about the animation quality from one scene, but I do want to say that this opening part with Subaru and Betty looks good. Animation's pretty solid, the character designs look good, and all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, just the general art direction on even a scene like this where they're far away, you know, they still look pretty good. We can go ahead and take a look at character designs, which definitely are improved. Just from this scene alone, I mean, character designs are way better to me. Especially scenes like this with Ram. Especially scenes like this with Ram. Or if you go forward a little bit, we have Frederica, Ram, and Roswell. Everyone here looks good. The background looks good. The lighting from the windows looks fantastic. It's a big step up from Season 2. And the direction, from what we can see, is also a step up. We have this scene, the scene we just saw. Interesting angles, um, interesting lighting, interesting composition, all kinds of stuff. I think all of this looks really good. Obviously, we have shots like this, which are big group shots. Um, and even in big group shots like this, everyone still looks good. Everyone looks on model, and we're not going to be able to tell super strongly from a preview. Obviously, they're not going to show, you know, their worst shots in a preview. At the end of the day, this is marketing. Um, they all look good, though. Even Otto in the back over there looking like a little fucking weirdo. And even Patroche looks good. This is a, that's a damn dragon. This Anastasia shot, honestly, this is probably the best Anastasia has ever looked. And then a few frames after that, Julius walks in. He looks fantastic. I uh, really can't stress enough how great the character art looks in Season 3. Or just this scene, uh, we have a great use of lighting to make the shot have a little bit more depth. We have great character art, as usual, and hopefully that this is something that is indicative overall, especially with leakers for V0 Season 3 stating to expect general consistent quality rather than, like, massive peak. Like, you know, a lot of people want free rin or JJK level stuff, Probably not going to happen, but, I mean, if shots are looking like this, some of these shots, I'll be real, do look better than Season 1. Um, I'm not expecting it to be as good consistently as Season 1, but some of these shots are very good. Especially when you have them going <laughs> so unnecessarily hard on Aldebron. I mean, they literally greased his helmet up. Look how shiny he is. All of these helmet highlights that he's never had before. For, for what? It just looks great. He doesn't need to be that shiny, but he's awesome. Or even in shots like this, these random shots... The background looks stellar. You can still see the the stretch of Pristella. It's a beautiful city. You can see the wonderful sky, all those trees. And even in the building that Pris Priscilla is in, the shot is still interesting. You have this really nice gradient lighting. The background there still looks good. Priscilla's character model looks good. Everything about Season 3 that we've seen so far looks really, really good. Now, obviously, uh, this is going to be the elephant in the room. Um, Liliana did indeed have a redesign. Uh, she is no longer wearing a silly bikini and having see-through pants. Uh, a lot of people are going to be upset about this, and it's strange because she is 23 years old and looks like a literal child. Not sure why you would want to see a bikini, uh, a child wearing a bikini, but I guess some people do, because apparently there's enough discourse already, even though the PV's been out for like a few hours. And now here's the thing, a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, it's a drawing, it's not that big of a deal. What is it a drawing of, is, is my question. Uh, it's a 23-year-old that looks suspiciously like a child. Um, the redesign is good, and it doesn't take away from her character whatsoever because the design is not relevant to her character. Her looking like a child is because I believe it was stated that she was malnourished or grew up in poverty, so she's small, which is fine. Uh, so just don't sexualize her. And this design helped that quite a bit. Um, showing skin is not explicitly being sexualized, but uh, this design previously, uh, very ungood. For a character as vibrant as her, as well, uh, the character acting that we see here is really, really good. Very vibrant, very lively character, and it seems that the uh, the preview really tried to capture that with some of this character, especially this scene right here. This is a this is a favorite of mine. Subaru and Liliana, be silly. I enjoyed that. We also have an interesting amount of attention to detail in this felt camp shot. Um, not only are Carol and Grimm's grandkids included in it, who are two basically side story exclusive characters after Carol was cut from Teresia's name chapter. We also have Ezo, who I don't know anything about. I still haven't read that side story, or those side stories, but the anime team even included them in there, which is impressive. Um, I'm assuming that this is technically, you know, an anime original shot. I don't think they're actually at Pristella. This is just like, a, hey, this is the felt camp and stuff like that. 
And I want to use this shot in particular, oh, let's go back, as a great example of just the improved, like, everything. Just look how fantastic this shot is. This background is beautiful, the art is wonderful, the lighting is fantastic. It's more interesting than just a bland room like in MHA. The character art looks good. This this entire shot is what I want to expect from ReZero Season 3. And it's also, uh, potentially, depending on the context of the scene, also really interesting direction. I, I like this quite a bit. This is a really good shot. Uh, this is a shot I also want to call in particular. This looks exactly like Season 1. Um, the great lighting from the midday setting. The, the character art looks exactly like you would see from su Season 1. Doesn't look like that alien ass I know hell season two Subaru, thank god. Um now, good question is uh why did they include why did they include this part? Uh, any anime only that is a little bit attentive will realize that this is Garfield's mom and that she is alive. Especially given that this scene is next. Garf Garf reacting. Uh we did not include Heinkel Estrella in the preview, however, uh we sure did include <laughs> Garfield's mom. The thing that gets revealed at the end of the second volume or whatever. I don't think it's the end, it's the middle, but either way, that's silly. Um, though this Garf shot looks really good. If this is what we can expect from Season 3, that's fantastic. Now my favorite parts of the trailer are going to be these serious shots. So, this the way that Sirius has been executed in this preview, this is my prime example of my hope for Rezo Season 3, okay? Extremely good character acting, really smooth movement, great direction, and, of course, after that, the small glimpses of action that we do get are really good. Like, this is fire. The Julius thing is fire. Uh, somebody in my Discord pointed out, actually two people, uh, Caper and Pyroluski, they pointed out that this looks like a, a colored illustration from Volume 19. I'm not sure if, one, it's a coincidence, two, that scene got reworked earlier into the anime, or three, it's a sign of how far production is. I don't know. Um... Yeah, it could be any of those three, maybe a secret fourth thing that I haven't thought of. But I wouldn't... I don't know if we should initially take this as... Oh, volume 19's already done. Probably not. I love this Wilhelm action. And throughout these two cuts, you've seen Sirius' hands moving around. I love this overarching theme where Sirius, who is introduced in the chapter Theater of Malice, if I recall, is dictating what's like like an orchestra. And is basically dictating the, the pace of the preview. Uh... Very hype. And just that, just that right there, that's fantastic. And another good action shot here with Sirius and Reinhard. He looks a little silly here, his eyes are a little too far apart, but it's, it's fine, that's not a big deal. <laughs> this scene is also really good, really good little action piece here. Um, we also have confirmation that if you're under the effect of Sirius' soul washing, your eyes are red. Um, I don't think that was in the novel, however, when you don't have pages and pages of internal monologue, to describe, oh my god, I'm going crazy. Uh, you need some visual indicator of that this character's under the effect of soul washing. So that's the red eyes. Um, and then obviously we have Subaru's whip here. A lot of people were asking me on stream, oh, I think they forgot Subaru's whip. It's been it's here the entire time. He's got the whip, and then he gets knocked down. And these these expressions in particular look really good. Just This is like two frames. But his face still looks so good and so on model. Very, very good shots. This entire little sequence here is stellar. If that's what we have to expect from some of the priority episodes of Season 3, maybe even more, then I'm certainly on board. I mean, I'm pretty sure the Sirius and Amelia scuffle is, like, not even that long. I'm pretty sure it ends in, like, one chapter, maybe two. I don't recall exactly. It's been a while since I've read Arc 5. But if we're getting that kind of quality on such a minor fight, and we haven't even seen any cuts from, like, Reinhardt versus Regulus or Garf versus Kurgan, then that might go, that might go hard. Capella is captured extremely well. I, I, Sirius and Capella are both two very unhinged people, but they were captured very well in the preview. Um, and of course, people are going to be mad about the redesign, and look, it's minor, and if you're whining about one centimeter of skin being covered up, please, for the love of God, go outside. But it does give us some interesting precedent. So, we have Liliana and Capella being a little more covered up, not extremely, just enough that it's not gratuitous. So it makes me wonder if Arc 6 is also going to have a little bit of a Shala redesign. And I do want to say, I know a lot of people don't like my Shala take. Uh, I think her design is pretty bad, but it doesn't mean I think it's all bad. I think she has good elements. I like the little things in her eyes. I like her scorpion tail hair. And I like that the colors are obviously supposed to be influenced by Super's color scheme. That's interesting. Um, 
but her being like 90% naked is unnecessary. Oh, but she lives in a desert. Yeah, it's 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 a fictional story, and she spends all of her time in a fucking tower, and she's a, also a scorpion. I don't think it's it's not that serious. Do you see what all our entire cast wore to the desert? By the way, they didn't go naked. They they bundled up because of the sand. Anyway, that's enough. <laughs> uh, we might see a Shala redesign for Arc Six, uh, which could be interesting. Uh, much appreciated. I really like the Liliana and Capella redesigns. Uh, one of my big fears with Season 3 was that it would immediately be in hot water because Liliana is a 23-year-old that looks 12 with a bikini on. Uh, but we, we dodged a bullet, thank god. I also want to mention this cut in particular of Priscilla pulling out the Yang Sword. This looks really good. These effects here, the fluidity of the motion, uh, the camera actually tracks its motion through the building. Obviously, it sounds silly, right? Like, of course it's going to track it through the building, but, you know, it looks really good. Like, especially if we play it back. That looks really nice. All of the ca This is crazy that they included this. There are a lot of serious illustrations where her ears just kind of look human. But damn. Like, <laughs> she's just an elf. So Sirius equals Fortuna got like 50% like more confirmed today. And, uh... Clearly there were no voices in this preview, otherwise it would probably be 100% confirmed. If, if Sirius has Fortuna's voice actor in the anime, then I mean, it might as well be Raps right then and there. Basically, confirmed. This is another example of what I meant by Capella being captured so well. The way that the camera goes through the building, the way it follows her movement like this... She looks really good in the anime. The character designs in general for ReZero really benefit from being in the anime when they're drawn by people that aren't ReZero's illustrator, who happens to always make them pencil thin, and also gives them the craziest baby face imaginable. Like, th these characters look so much better in anime. It's crazy. And we also get uh, our first visual representation of EMM, the little spell that Subaru and Beatrice has developed. Um, I've seen some people not really like how this looks, although a lot of people haven't talked about it yet. <coughs> If you have any thoughts on it, let me know in the comments. I don't really have an opinion. I think it looks fine. And then the preview basically ends right here with Subaru and Betty going towards the camera. And it ends on Betty's little butterfly here. Uh, this is probably just a coincidence, but it could be cool foreshadowing that Echidna has a role in Arc 5. The Scarf Dona or Eridna, whatever we called her. Um, for Arc 5 and 6, actually. So that could be interesting. I don't know if that was intentional, but if so, that's very cool. And as I predicted in my video, it's Fall 2024. Anyway, that's about it. Just wanted to go over the, the preview real quick. Say that it looks fantastic. Very excited. We should be greatly looking forward to this season. It, I'm only pleased with what I've seen. And October 2024 can't come soon enough. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for the funny YouTube algorithm. You can also become a YouTube member, which gives you access to your behind-the-scenes content, a badge on comments and livestream chats, as well as the use of emotes and videos before their actual release. You can also check the description for socials like Twitter, where I'm objectively correct all the time, and Discord, where we talk about ReZero, My Hero Academia, Jujutsu Kaisen, and stuff like that. That's about it, though. Thank you for watching. See ya.